Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Tuesday, December the 21st. This is the winter solstice. So the good news is that uh, the days get longer and more sunshine as we uh, head to court, towards Christmas and the new year. And today we're going to look at <clears throat> QAN, quadrature amplitude modulation, but we're going to look at it from an analog viewpoint. In the previous posts, I looked at using the RTLSDR for receiving AM, and I was thinking about the uh, IQ receiver that the RTL has, and I was thinking of the various ways you can use that. So today, today we're going to look at that type of a uh, setup, and here I have a Psychos uh, model set up, and I've got an IQ modem. I've got a uh, carrier here, and for simplicity, I'm using a 10 kilohertz carrier. It's a cosine wave. And then I've got an orthogonal carrier down here, the Q, uh, the quadrature signal, and that carries at 10 kilohertz, but it's a sine wave. And what I'm doing is I'm just using two discrete tones, one at 500 hertz, the other at one kilohertz, and I'm multiplying the carrier by this tone. I'm not, um, it's not like AM modulation where you have one plus M, the information signal times the carrier. I'm double sideband suppressed carrier modulating it. So I'm multiplying the two directly together uh, and the same thing down here, and I'm adding the two together, and I'm transmitting it. And then on the receive end, all I'm doing is I'm injecting the same carriers, the I carrier at cosine omega CT at 10 kilohertz, and the orthogonal Q carrier at 10 kilohertz. And what we can do is subtract these two tones. Now, if you look at the output spectrum, you'll see, um, you'll see the two tones in the upper and lower sideband. There are different frequencies, so they're not sitting on top of one another. But what's interesting is with the IQ uh, type of modem, you can actually send two separate tones and recover them. Um, and then we'll, what we'll do is we'll look at, since these tones are at different frequencies, we'll look at two signals, two voice signals, where the actual spectrums overlap, and we can see that we can also send two separate voice signals and recover them independently. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of like... Um, uh, transmission where you use, let's say you have one carrier frequency and you use an antenna with horizontal and vertical polarization so you can put one signal on the horizontal polarization and the other signal on the vertical polarization. This is sort of the same idea. Let's run this model and see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna run it. So there's the uh, transmit spectrum. Let's just uh, look at that. Now, since it's a double sideband suppressed carrier, we won't see the carrier at 10 kilohertz. But there's my upper sideband tone at 500. So it'll be at 10,500. And there's my 1 kilohertz tone at 1,100, uh, 11,000 uh, hertz. And there's my lower sideband at 10 kilohertz minus 500 and 10 kilohertz it's minus 1K. So that's the spectrum. Um, Let's look at, these are the two carriers. So let's just magnify this here. We'll look at the beginning here. So there's my cosine, my I carrier, and there's my sine, my Q carrier. And this is the uh, transmit double sideband suppressed carrier here from both the I and the Q added together. And um, there's my 500 hertz signal, and there's my 1 kilohertz signal. And then at the receive end, these are my recovered tones, which is my 500 hertz and my 1 kilohertz. So you can see it works. Now, what we haven't looked at is what happens. This is kind of, in a way, not realistic in the sense that you don't know what the transmit phase is. So unfortunately, on the receive end, you're going to have some phase difference between these two carriers. We're not looking at that in this video, but if there is a phase difference, you're going to have crosstalk between the I and the Q. So nothing's perfect in this world, but if you could recover the, um, the carrier and lock it so that, that there is no phase difference, then you could fully recover these signals. Now let's look at replacing these uh, discrete tones with an actual wave signal. Now to do that, what I did is uh, I went into... The, there's a program called Audacity, which I find is an incredible program. Um, and what I did there is I simply recorded my voice for four seconds, just saying I channel, I channel, I channel. So let's just listen to this here. Let's see if this works. 
I channel. This is the I channel. I channel. I channel. I channel. Okay, so there's the I channel. And then what I did is um, to make it more amenable for the model, I low pass filtered it. So I went to effect. And you have to scroll down here. And there's the low pass filter. So I low pass filtered it at um, 4 kilohertz with a 12 dB per octave roll off. So that's how I generated my WAV files. And then uh, I used a different model here. So let's open the model. So there's my I and Q model. Now I've replaced the discrete tones with structures. Now you can't um, use a WAV file directly in Psychos. You have to create a structure, which is basically um, uh, a matrix of um, sample uh, sample sizes versus times. Now I'm sampling at, uh, I didn't mention that in the um, uh, Audacity, but I'm sampling at 22050. So what I have to do is I have to go back into Psycho's lab and I have to uh, create these two um, structures. So to do that, there's Psycho's lab. I'm going to open the editor. And I'm going to read in, uh, I've created two WAV files. One is the I channel, where I say I channel, I channel, and Q channel. So I've created those two WAV uh, files. I'm going to read them in and create the structures V1 and V2. So that's what I'm going to do here. Okay, so four seconds at 22050 is going to be 88,200 samples. So then I can go back into um, Psychos and I can run this. So we'll run this. This takes uh, this takes a couple of minutes to run because I'm the wave files are four seconds long, so there's a lot of processing. Okay, so the simulation is completed now. So let's look at this graph here. This graph is, this channel here is looking at the double sideband suppressed carrier of the I channel plus the Q channel. So that's my DSBSC. This is the wave file on channel one saying I channel, I channel. And this is the wave file on the Q channel. Okay, so that's that graph. And, um, this graph here is the output spectrum. So there's no carrier at 10K, and that's the double sideband. That's the lower sideband of the two wave files added together, and that's the upper sideband of the two wave files added together. And notice that the uh, 4 kilohertz cutoff low pass filter of the wave files, you can see that there's a good cutoff there. So let, let's look at the recovered tones. Those are my recovered tones. So let's listen to the tones uh, just to see how they differ. So let's go in here to... Um, so let's listen to the... Uh, this is the trans, this is the transmit I wave. Let's listen to that. I channel. This is the I channel. I channel. I channel. I channel. Okay, and let's listen to the receive I channel. I channel, this is the I channel, I channel, I channel, I channel. So you can see that you can transmit then uh, two waveforms that overlap in frequency and separate them at the receiver. Now the receive um, waveform was there was another low pass filter in there as well. So it cut off a little bit of the information from this one. And there seemed to be a little bit of crosstalk. That's probably because my sampling that I'm using here is probably a little bit too low. But anyways, what we've de demonstrated here is some of the neat features that you can use with an INQ type of setup for transmission.